Chavela Global Media Forum. The international congress that provides a platform for more than 1,500 media representatives and experts from the fields of politics, culture, business, development, and science. Welcome to Bonn, the UN city of Germany. These delegates design interdisciplinary approaches to meeting the challenges of global problems and explore how the media can play a central role in investigating and communicating solutions. The three-day conference program contains more than 50 panel discussions, workshops, interactive presentations, and exhibitions, as well as attractive leisure events in and around the World Conference Center in Bonn, Germany. It is great for me to be back uh, in Bonn. You feel a mission. In which we launch one year campaign. You get very, very useful information. Highlight uh, what is actually happening in this world. Between uh, journalist, advocacy and diplomacy. To actually push the issue rather than try and push themselves. The challenge is uh, the question of democracy and elections. Keep that alive and build <laughs> a more stable and more transparent and accountable democracy. The so next time you must join us. Thank you. Please welcome your host, Connie Chimoch. Wonderful good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I can see most of you have survived. You have survived a long hours of dancing, long hours of romanticizing down the Rhine. I believe 1,100 of you have been there, so I'm not astonished that not all of you are here this morning. But we're entering the second day of the Global Media Forum 2012, and our esteemed panel and the moderator are already sitting there. Just before we're starting, let me just remind you that you can sort of uh, put uh, questions uh, to the panel later on uh, via Twitter, the wonderful lady sitting here. And you've just seen uh, Eric Betterman. He'll be here in an hour's time. Uh, and he'll bring along a very nice guest, uh, the Foreign Minister of uh, the Republic of Germany, uh, Guido Westerwelle. So he'll be just coming over from Brussels, probably a just-in-time delivery, so to say. Ladies and gentlemen, um, for those of you who do not speak German and who always need the headsets, please be reminded that the headsets ought to be handed in back afterwards to the wonderful hostesses, uh, because otherwise there might be a lack and we can't supply everybody uh, for the next couple of days. Okay, having done the housekeeping, ladies and gentlemen, I um, would like to do a tiny, tiny, tiny intro into the plenary discussion, because um, there was a, um, a worldwide known artist uh, in the 70s, and I see into your faces, and most of you haven't even been born then. In 75, he said, uh, and he was and, uh, Andy Warhol, the most beautiful thing in Tokyo is McDonald's. The most beautiful thing in Stockholm is McDonald's. The most beautiful thing in Florence is McDonald's. And remember, that was 75. Beijing and Moscow don't have anything beautiful yet. Well, the word globalization was not invented then. And uh, globalization is something that Andy Warhol was already feeling was threatening the local cultures. And Ute Schäfer, who is editor-in-chief of Deutsche Welle, will take away that sort of basic feeling that globalization might have a positive or a negative impact on our cultures with her esteemed panel. And please, Ute, you take the floor. An applause for Ute Schäfer, please. Mr. President, this is your seat. And Mrs. Merkel over there, Mr. Ambassador. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we have to hurry up uh, in a sense, um, <laughs> but uh, we will do our best to keep you awake. And um, we put this panel under the title Globalization Friend or Foe of Cultural Diversity. And um, we've taken the liberty of ending the sentence with a question mark. I think that is quite right. On the one hand, as Connie already told you, globalization opens doors. It allows mixing. It, ex uh, it allows us to experience a wide variety of cultures through migration and through uh, traveling. It breaks down borders and facilitates 
travel and the exchange of information via the internet. But on the other hand, and that is also what we have to discuss this morning, um, globalization is associated with and causes quite the opposite. It is creating walls, stereotypes, prejudices, and um, steering, up and steering up sweeping and dangerous prejudices against the other, the foreigner. And I think these two, um, th these two sides of the same coin we have to discuss this morning, and I'm, it's not always that easy as yesterday evening, yeah, where uh, gapping the intercultural, or bridging the intercultural differences is as easy as putting some nice music on a boat on the Rhine and um, putting some interesting people involved in this issue together uh, to ex exchange their opinions. That is easy. Yesterday evening it was quite easy, but in political life, in contemporary current political questions, it is sometimes quite difficult. And also during the last decade, I think uh, many stereotypes are, are today perhaps even harder um, than 10 years ago. In many instances, let me put that as I see this in the beginning, our societies are struggling to cope with the cultural diversity and cultural differences on offer, or it would seem so. They are overextended in a way. I'm happy that the panel is here. You already know Mr. Yusuf Havivi, former president of Indonesia between 1998 and 1999. Under his leadership, the first three elections were held, but that is not all. Mr. Habibi opened up the country to media independence and freedom of expression and brought about democratic reform. Today, you are running the Habibi Center in Jakarta, which campaigns for human rights. And this battle for human rights is not always that easy, even in a patchwork country, a highly culturally mixed country like Indonesia. And I'm quite happy that we have the Indonesian perspective on the panel. Beside me, Ambassador Dr. Heinrich Kreft, he's Director for Public Diplomacy and Dialogue Among Civilizations in the German Foreign Office. He is quite involved in the dialogue, uh, interfaith dialogue and intercultural dialogue. You've done a lot of uh, publications on um, transition in the Arab world and the rise of China, and you've been to many, many different places. So it is a comparative approach, and you could uh, make or explain us German foreign policy and the role cultural diversity is playing in, I think. Mrs. Christine Merkel is head of the culture division at the German Commission for UNESCO, where she is in charge of the Memory of the World program. Your specialisms are cultural diversity and the development of democracy, subjects on which you have written several extensive publications. And Mrs. Heidi Storsberg Montes is director Director General of the Educational Television System in Mexico, which is part of the Mexican Ministry of Education. So there, it is, there is an educative um, motivation in it. You're a journalist, you worked for a long time as a journalist, so perhaps you have also some practical hints how difficult or how easy it is to convince public opinion about the necessity of cultural diversity to shape globalization. And in the beginning before, before this discussion here, we met outside and we said, let us do it in a quite vivid way here, our discussion. Let us do it like in a radio studio or in a TV studio and just put it into very short questions and answers so that uh, you all uh, could, could, easily, um, could, could, could easily understand and uh, see how concrete this, in this very bright issue is. And in the beginning, I want to make it very simple. I want to put to every one of my panelists a simple question. Why is cultural diversity an issue which is frightening, which is ca causing fears and is making people anxious? Could you explain that in a three sentences, Mrs. Storsberg? Well, I think one of the, the most important fear is losing identity. I think this is a, a very important question. and. Losing the feeling of belonging, belong to one culture, belong to a nation, belong, belong to something. This is very important for people to understand where you are, where you, where you live, what you're up to. I think these are uh, two of the most important fears uh, that appear uh, in, in, this, uh, in this world, in this, 
in this, uh, well, in this regard. Uh, yeah. regard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, what do you think? Well, globalization leads to um, growing exposure of more and more people to more and more cultures, foreign cultures, different cultures, and, um, and um, this um, leads to this type of, of fears, I guess. Um, in Germany, we have the term of patchwork families, and uh, this could lead to patchwork identities. Uh, your identity is changing, is changing quickly, your own, but also your children. They, have, uh, they seem to have different identities, um, and this creates fear because um, identity is something very individual, very characteristic for your own, for yourself, for your group. And um, undermining this is, is a threat if you do not understand uh, the other cultures. So the lack of, lack of knowledge, the, the ignorance, this is, I think, the problem. And overcoming this is increasing the knowledge, is increasing dialogue among civilizations. Mm -hmm. How widespread is this fear in a patchwork or, let's say, rainbow nation as Indonesia, Mr. President? Um, what we are facing now are the values. The values of the people in a globalized system and in, uh, in for more informed societies because of technology. You are using internet, whatever, and all those social networks. So that means the values of other cultures are coming into the room, living room, of families who doesn't know that values. You see? And what the crisis, what we have, whether it's uh, economic or financial, whatever, is a crisis of values. The values has been distorted. And because of that, the decision of the decision makers is not always be right. And these values is determined by culture and religion. And the compatibility of culture and religion, that is, who make as a result the values. I give you an example. I mean, oh, I'm not allowed to Perhaps talk. Perhaps we come back later. to the example okay. later. Because no, no, uh, okay, <laughs> oh, I, is it a uh, short one? Uh, a short one? Yeah. No, uh, not an example. The example would be too long. <laughs> <laughs> so we make it no, later. <laughs> uh, let's say this. Uh, the culture is 200,000 years old. The life in the world is 4,000 million years. Homo erectus is 2 million years. Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens, Homo erectus means a creature who stand of two of their own legs is 2 million years. And Homo sapiens means a creature who wants to know what, what happened. It's always a question, why? Why not that? And that is Homo sapiens, it's just 200,000 years. And from that time, culture started. Religion is just 5,000 years. You see, which survived today, is those really are 5,000 years ago. Now, the culture and religion must synergize, must be compatible to another. And now, because of the globalization and the flow of information, dot com, very fast, you influence all those values. Exactly. But it's not compatible. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are frightened. Not the culture, not the diversity. Because the diversity of culture creates productivity, innovation, etc. Later. Uh -huh. you, you make us curious anyway, um, and you already mentioned the benefits, uh, how cultural diversity could shape um, globalization in a sense. In this global village, McLuhan described already, Mrs. Merkel, what, um, what is, what is uh, motivating the fear of people when it comes to diversity, diversity sitting next door, as Mr. President told us? 
I think we as human beings are very slow learners, eh? and we live in a time of speed. So cultural diversity always has been a fact of life, so that's not new. And the real choice is, will we use it intelligently? And there is a huge responsibility for parents, for teachers, for you as journalists in the media. Uh, and the second element, I think it's people also have to get a bit more robust emotionally, because when we are in a situation where we don't understand the language, where we don't read the symbolism, we become, of course, very uneasy. And the point is when this uneasiness gets exploited politically. This is where the real trouble is. And I think together we really have a fantastic task there to help people to see the wells because humanity was created through diversity. There was no other path. But this is not as understood as it could be. You're working for the UNESCO and you know, uh, you're knowing a lot of regions in the world. So if we look at patchwork nations like Indonesia or like Northern, Northern Nigeria, Nigeria as such, um, I agree with you that when it comes to political propaganda, then very, very, uh, very suddenly um, radical ideas grow and stereotypes against the, the others grow also. Um, Coming back, because you're involved in this cultural diversity issue, what are your main arguments? What are the benefits? Why should globalization and political thinkers, shapers of globalization, uh, take uh, diversity into account? What are the main arguments? It's a fantastic resource for problem solving, and we do live in a troubled world, so there are many challenges in ecology, in uh, education, and uh, we can only win together. I think that's the real uh, main message. And there are many encouraging examples uh, from around the globe, but it also very long, very often it took long time to achieve a political platform where this was seen as a shared understanding, as also promoted by government in the constitutions South African rainbow constitution took decades of apartheid and many lives were lost to get there. So I think this is really a new stage how we understand nation states. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, there are big difficulties to accept that and we find many um, separatist movements. For example, also the example of Mali. And I would like to, to come to Indonesia. How important is cultural diversity for a country like Indonesia and um, also for politicians working there to enhance it? Um, <clears throat> I can give you two examples. Mm -hmm. Facts. The cultural dif diversity in the United States of America and the cultural diversity in Indonesia. We know that it is just 520 years ago as Columbus uh, discovered America. And the majority of the people there were Indian, but people coming from Asia as well as from Europe, because they know that this is a new continent, who cannot develop themselves in their homeland because of the religious affairs, economic and chances, etc. And so they had the chance to develop in the United States. And they need more than 200 years to declare the United States of America independence from their colonial master, the British as well as the French. And they need even around 200 years to make it possible that not a European descendant like Obama became the president. And going through a, what you call development of more than 500 years, where they have a lot of problem, terrorists and problem among themselves, many, many da daughters and sons of United States of America were killed, more than in the First World War, Second World War, 
and in the Middle East and Vietnam. Small being killed there. Now, but the result of the cultural diversity there, where culture and the compatibility with their religion and cultural diversity among themselves, because they increase understanding among themselves, could increase the, their productivity so that the United States become one of the highest productivity countries. Now, Indonesia. Indonesia is the only maritime continent of the world. And in this maritime continent, since thousands of years, diversity, not only biodiversity, but human beings are there. There are more than 300 ethnic groups in the maritime continent Indonesia. And this, we don't have a problem among us because of culture, no. Because of religion, no. Maybe because of, of social justice. Uh -huh. so you see, that is. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we click, but I'm optimistic because I'm convinced that the cultural diversity, if it could be developed wisely and applied wisely, could increase very straight the productivity of a human being. Because productivity is a function of three elements, culture, religion, and the understanding of science and technology. Mm -hmm. Those three. Mm 